All right, Bank. Today is Tuesday. It is January 30th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. As always on Tuesdays, it's myself, also joined by Chief, but we do have a guest today on Zoom coming out of Portland, Oregon. We are joined by Les Knight from the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. Um, we're going to talk to uh, Les what it's like to be an extinctionist. Les, uh, thanks for doing this. Welcome to the show. How, how do you like being an extinctionist? Oh, it's the greatest, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I hadn't heard that term extinctionist until Elon Musk said, you know, the problem isn't left and right, it's extinctionist versus humanitarians. Like, well, wait a minute, I'm both humanitarian and extinctionist. <laughs> well, how do you how do you circle that square? That kind of it kind oh, of seems like oh. they're at odds with each other. Oh, it, it does seem like it at first glance, yes. But you know, as we phase ourselves out humans will have so much better life, you know, tens of thousands of children dying every day, all that would be gone. We might even uh, have world peace if we stop fighting over all the resources, and have more room to spread out, you know, more of everything for everybody. Housing, won't have homeless people because there'll be houses available. The way we're going now, we're increasing by 70 million a year. If we were decreasing by 70 million a year, now, of course, the real estate market would crash but that's okay renters would do well and home buyers would do well yeah the, the housing market's always crashing so yeah yeah but... yeah that, that's going to happen on so no matter what happens. i know it, yeah it's it's a pyramid scheme that goes up and falls down hey but before we really get off and running here i want to talk about our friends at game time because you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event game time is the fast and easy way to buy your tickets to all sports music comedy and theater events near you yeah, this is this is the time too. I feel like this is big time uh, stand up comedy season. I feel like this is when people start rolling through Chicago, the big acts, and it's it's March Madness is around the corner too. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna want to be getting on game time. Uh, make sure you they take care of everything. It's the absolute best. It's super easy. Uh, buy your tickets there. The last minute prices, that's no joke. Like that's how I get my that's how I get my tickets. I just wait for those prices to drop. You can't beat game time, so make sure you're uh, downloading that. Yeah, it's app. great. It's great. It's just easy. It takes the guesswork out of everything. So you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DOGWALK for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Go do it, everyone. Game time's great. Right. So I, I get, so you're, so is the ex, is the extinctionist label, is that too harsh of a label? Because it seems like you just want population reduction based on that previous comment you just made. No, we would uh, re have uh, population de reduction on our way to extinction. Okay. So, yes. So, uh, uh, no, it's okay. It's a good enough term, except that it might make people think we want all species to go extinct. and. One of the main uh, motivators for most of us, not everybody, most of us, is to preserve uh, the two million species that are destined for extinction because of our increase and in, uh, activities. Now, we, we are, there's a lot of people who say that we're living at a time right now where there are the most people that will ever live on Earth simultaneously, that, that we might get up to a population of around 9 billion and then because birth rates are falling and uh, th that it's going to it's going to decrease, is there is there a number and it doesn't feel like, OK, and, and while while that's happened, while the population has gone up, abject poverty globally has at an all time low. So do we do we need to be marching towards extinction in order to have kind of a balance um with with resources and human happiness well since we went into overshoot in 1970 we've got a long way to go to get back into balance we started using more than the earth would produce uh, 50, over 50 years ago and overshoot is a combination of how many of us there are and what we do so uh we the birth rates are going down as you say the, even the growth rate is going down mm -hmm. but we are still increasing and nine billion when we can't care for eight billion uh this is not an encouraging sign despite what uh, many people say and we could even hit 10 billion uh, according to the un but i i just don't think we can uh do that with crop failures and so on mm -hmm. but now, if we yeah go ahead sorry but the, uh, how do you explain uh, the the rate at which poverty is falling, and I think you can 
you know, put a correlation with human suffering with poverty. So if poverty is falling globally, yes. while population is increasing, doesn't that kind of throw a wrench in your premise that there is too scarce of resources as the population continues to grow? Well, that is uh, due to the Green Revolution, which was a, we put our crops on um, performance enhancing drugs. Mm -hmm. And now the, uh, you know, just like an athlete using steroids too many years, things don't work out in the long run. And now we're starting to have the uh, negative effects of the Green Revolution. And, uh, you know, a large part of the uh, global statistics for uh, poverty reduction is because China has mm -hmm. eliminated famines. They haven't had a famine long time. And they have eliminated abject poverty. And they did it by, uh, of course, it wasn't voluntary. So that's not, we, we don't go along with that. But it did work. They, uh, they're they lowering their uh, birth rate, uh, which never really got to one, even though that was their stated goal. They did manage to get to the point where uh, in 2022, they started uh, actually shrinking in numbers. So if we look at individual nations, uh, and of course, China's a huge one, mm -hmm. uh, reducing birth rate reduces poverty and famines. Sure, but they still have a very high population. I think, I think there's probably people who would point to uh, the fact that they opened up their relations with the United States and industrialization that has pulled them out of this poverty more uh, than than the one child policy, which they have they've gotten rid of because they fear uh, their aging and declining population from an economic standpoint. Right. Yes, that's a uh, the old style of looking at uh, economics is we need young people to take care of the old people, of mm -hmm. course robots don't pay into social security or whatever the retirement system is but yes that is a good point because uh, in being able to sell so much stuff to uh, the united states and europe has really helped their economy tremendously and so it could be a combination of um, a lower birth rate and their uh, huge markets so we can't just go by correlation causation mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 you know, that voluntary march towards zero as well. And you said, you know, we're a, we're a threat to uh, the two million other species on the planet, which I don't necessarily yeah. disagree with that, um, mm -hmm. that we are living in a way that is in direct competition with other species in terms of their, their resources and land and habitat and all that. However, we've been on this planet for 400,000 years. A at what point did... Do you think that humans became such a uh, nemesis to the rest of the planet? Was it just industrialization? Are you would you be satisfied if we went to a model where humans lived in a more pre-industrial um, way of life? Well, that would be an improvement, wouldn't it? No, I, think I, don't, we began. I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation. Correct. Yeah. This is a nice conversation so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, the uh, hunter and gatherer type uh, agrarian and, and those kind of lifestyles only support a, a very small number of people. We've uh, been able to reach this increasing from 1 billion in 1800 to 8 billion t today uh, is because of the fossil fuels that we found, and they won't last forever. But the uh, w when it was that we started adversely impacting Earth's biosphere was when we got fire. The uh, agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, those just accelerated it greatly, and of course, finding fossil fuels. But when we started uh, having fires and, and burning down the savannas of Africa, because it really helped, we could see the tigers and hide away and get uh, barbecues going. And uh, so we probably caused a few extinctions at that time and then little by little of course we spread all over the globe and caused extinctions everywhere we went les you mentioned a little earlier um about the downsides of going green uh what can you get into that a little bit what is like the biggest downsides you're seeing of this green 
uh, this green change? The uh, if you mean the indus the uh, green revolution, yes, the green revolution. Uh, yeah, Norman Borlaug, who uh, got that going when he was accepting the Nobel Peace Peace Prize for that because you know eliminating poverty he said this is just to give us some breathing room now we can feed everybody but unless we get the population growth under control this is only a temporary thing and of course he was right and we didn't and so now we are uh, having runoff from agriculture the uh, too many um, insecticides causing insectageddon you know if you have bugs a bug splat on your windshield it's rare but it used to be it used to be covered i i worked in a gas station 50 years ago and every car that came in needed their windshield to be scrubbed off and now how often does that happen we can't live without insects mm -hmm. so it, this is not a good sign those are part of the uh green revolution is our um chemicals uh, the fertilizer runs into the oceans and we have dead zones uh, and just using up uh, all of the land, the 90 percent of new deforestation is for agriculture. And we got to eat. You know, a lot of people are saying, no, it's the rich people. They're using all the resources. Well, we all eat. We don't. Uh, rich people can't eat all the fish in the sea. And the uh, fish populations, fish stocks, they call them, are collapsing. And, uh, of course, the Amazon is disappearing because we need to raise meat. Uh, and that is the downside of the green revolution. Do you th have you are you familiar with uh, regenerative agriculture? Yeah, they're using uh, cattle. Yeah, is more or less. It? Yeah, it's. I think it's, it is part it, of it. Yeah, there's yeah. the the cattle he, and, and really, then. Uh, yeah, and uh, the idea is that ungulates have always broken up the soil mm -hmm. and and made it uh, better for uh, regeneration. Well, this has been totally uh, debunked, I have to say. The, uh, it was buffalo bison mm -hmm. that uh, took care of that in the past. And uh, beef cattle don't affect the ground the same way. In the West, we, we have a lot of places where the, the cattle of, of uh, the cattle of cow burn, where they will uh, overrun a... Uh, a spring, a water area. Of course, it's not their fault. They're just mm -hmm. doing what they do. It's the uh, ranchers that have allowed them to uh, have too many. And uh, there's a huge area of uh, cow burn, they call it. There's nothing else there but, well, cow patties. Yeah. Okay. Now, now you're um, obviously still here with us today. So, you know, you haven't you haven't taken any drastic measures uh, to as part of this movement. Are there, are there things that you do in your life that, you know, whether it be diet or transportation that uh, you, you do in, in, as a way to lower your own carbon footprint or, or live a lifestyle that is more aligned with uh, your, your views and values on this? Yes, I think the biggest one. Uh, and there is actually a chart on that on our website. The biggest one is not procreating by far bigger than not driving bigger than uh going vegan uh it just goes uh way over the uh amount of good that a person can do so that's the first thing i would recommend if they're a guy vasectomy and right now they say uh male contraception is has been five years away for 25 years and it's a pretty accurate joke but now it's only two years away because it's gone into human trials and uh they uh, insert a uh, there's make an insertion into each vas and it uh, kills the sperm on its way out and it so it's called plan a so you don't have to have plan b if you've got plan a and this could be a real game changer because vasectomies should be considered permanent and a lot of guys are going well maybe later you know i want to keep my options open and so uh the burden falls on the, their women partners but uh this will really just make it so much easier for men to take responsibility for those little wigglers. If they want to go, uh, I mean, eating beef is probably one of the biggest uh, contributors to uh, both greenhouse gases and um, habitat degradation. I don't think uh, greenhouse gases and the, and the climate change is the biggest uh, worry we have 
it's our loss of biodiversity, mm-hmm. uh, which which could cause the eventually collapse of the biosphere, which had to be very unpleasant for all life. Yeah, I, I would agree. Now, are you familiar with the movie Armageddon? No, I haven't. Okay, so Armageddon, Bruce Willis, it's a, it's a nice movie. It's a nice little action movie. Sounds ben, great, yeah. yeah. Bar, uh, <laughs> ben Affleck and... But basically, like, they have this, uh, you know, a cataclysm is coming via an asteroid, okay? And uh-huh. I, I'm wondering if you, when you lay your head down at night, if you're secretly pining or openly pining for an asteroid <laughs> to wipe us out. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, we, we, we need to be phased out so that we can clean up our little messes like nuclear power plants on our way out we've we've left a lot of messes here and if we just disappeared all of a sudden uh, you know as in a nuclear war that would not be the best thing for for the entire biosphere or for humanity either so really a phase out is the i i don't dream of our our uh, uh, armageddon is that what it was yes yes yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> or atomageddon either which would wipe out mm-hmm. uh, all of humanity uh e- even a, a fairly small nuclear war would give us a nuclear winter all the crops would right. fail you know it, it, the scenario has been gone has gone over many times since we uh first started using the the bomb so you're pretty true to the main line on your website which is vhemt.org and it's phasing out the human species by voluntarily ceasing to breed will allow Earth's biosphere to return to good health. Crowded conditions and resource shortages will improve as we become less dense. So let it Couldn't happen. I said now. it better myself. Uh, that's <laughs> written by you. So that's what you're... Oh, lo- I did write that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for death by, like you said, meteor or, um, you know... Uh, no. Anything like that. So what, back to the vasectomies. So if if it were up to you, like you're the president, are you just stroking the the uh, the the documents that hey you got to have a vasectomy? <laughs> I think uh, we're we're way a long ways from uh, having involuntary contraceptives. There are hundreds of millions of women couples who want to uh, have contraception. They don't want to procreate more than they already have, and they can't get it. They're it's denied to them. Uh, and women especially uh, have the uh, suffer the most from this because they are stuck with raising uh, another offspring. Maybe they've already got a few mm-hmm. more than they can handle. So what we need to do first, we need um, global reproductive uh, health services, including uh, prenatal, postnatal, uh, and then the full range of contraceptive uh, methods for you know free for everybody and uh i don't think you need to make any anything permanent or um uh, mandatory it will catch on in countries where it has like south africa uh, south korea and uh china as you say the government is trying to get more people on because they they're in this old mindset where oh we need more people you know we don't need more people things will be gradually improving if they just change their uh, economic system to adjust to a shrinking population. Yeah, I, I can't really speak to. That. I I do have a fear when reading about your, you know, the, this kind of if there was some sort of a rapid population decline, that it could lead to even scarcer resources because you'd have less people, you know, uh, in trucking and farming and all these different things to get resources to the people who need them. Uh, less doctors, less less all sorts of things. Although maybe you don't necessarily care about the less doctors thing, but I I, <laughs> I think that there could be a scenario where uh, fewer people and fewer resources actually, or fewer people leads to fewer resources and then more conflict. I don't think that's like an impossible thing to imagine. We've had conflict over resources throughout human history, regardless of how what the total population number is. Right, but it's always been on a local scale. Or, uh, you know, people didn't fly around the country. Mm-hmm. But on their local scale, uh, people were in conflict were conflict, I think, almost always for humans is about uh, resources. And so it is possible that uh, there will be some adjustments needed as we have fewer and fewer people. But 
you can imagine there are adjustments needed as we have more and more people. Mm -hmm. If we're barely keeping everybody fed at 8 billion, what are we going to do when it's 10 billion? And, you know, it's, they're having trouble uh, with too many people at the national parks and uh, recreation is difficult. You know, every, everywhere people go, there, are, there just get to be so many of us that it's difficult to uh, enjoy ourselves as, as we might. That's funny you say that because I, I, I'm 37 and I want to say that in my lifetime, the population globally has gone, I want to say from six to eight. Is that accurate? Or, or in the ballpark at least? Billions? Six billion maybe uh, in the 90s and now eight billion? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. I don't notice yeah. a difference. I don't notice a difference at all. Like we we went up to <laughs> we went up to eight billion, and you know uh -huh. I, I know I'm sure that there's some data, but you're saying like ah, oh, there's more people in national parks and this and that. Um, I I just I have not. Have you felt that where it's like oh man, like there's it just feels differently than it did when I was a kid. No, and there's wow. you know a twenty five per or a third. What would that math be? Twenty five percent increase in the population, or a thirty three percent increase in the population. Yeah, lines still see the same. See yeah, the same. Yeah, you still need the the Disney Fast Pass when you go to Disney, regardless. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's pause, take another break, and talk about Factor because uh, you're getting started on your resolutions with Factor. So uh, you're ready for the new year. Obviously, here we're about to be out of January. Keep it rolling. Keep mm -hmm. it rolling with Factor. They're yep. going to make it easier on you when things are going to start to get tougher. They are a ready to eat meal delivery service, and they take the stress out of meal planning and they set you up for success in the new year. Yeah, I, I love Factor. This is, you know, it's never frozen. It's right in your fridge. It's super convenient. Portion control is great. The, the, they're delicious. So, you know, these are the dog days, right? No daylight. Everyone's yep. kind of just slogging around. This is a way to ensure that you get a good meal quickly. Uh, you don't have to worry about going to the store. You don't have to spend on delivery apps. You just want to have Factor ready to rock and roll when you need it. Uh, so, you can't, you can't beat it. You need yeah. it. Yeah, over 35 meals to choose from per week. Uh, options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. Plus over 55 weekly add-ons. Uh, nutritious, flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Um, it's a great spot. Head to factormeals.com slash dogwalk50 and use code dogwalk50 to get 50% off. That's code dogwalk50 at factormeals.com slash dogwalk50 to get 50% percent off that's Ooh. five zero percent off it's a great code that's, that's a big discount it's a great code go do it um all right we'll get back in the episode get right get it rationed out yeah yeah you know uh, that's part of the problem with the awareness is that it kind of sneaks up on you i mean mm -hmm. you know we're into overshoot uh which means that we're using more than the earth provides and take the uh Agala, ogallala aquifer in the midwest mm -hmm. uh, i don't think Chicago gets any water out of it, but it might no. be up that high. Downstate and, we might, yeah. Yeah. So people keep drawing down the groundwater, and they're just as much as there ever was, and then you don't miss your water till the well runs dry. So we're taking it out, you know, so much faster than mm -hmm. it's going down that eventually, you know, it's like, how can I be overdrawn? I still have checks left. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair point. Uh, I also read on your website uh, that you said your your worldview was guided by love. Okay. Oh yeah. And and you seem like a delightful man. I must say. Um, <laughs> so I I believe you when you say that. But I do think that there is um, there is utility in that in love in general. And, and inhuman compassion and human love that would be erased from the universe under if you if you got what you wanted over a, you know like you said a slow period of time yeah don't you, don't you think that 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 in and of itself is like there is do you think there's value in human love I guess is the question as long as there are humans there will be value in human love there's value in whale love for that matter I don't know yeah, we don't know how how they how they feel about each other. Mm -hmm. Right, we really don't, and we and and if the animal kingdom is violent and bloody and horrible, no matter what species you're talking about, and even plants compete with each other for resources, and plants are living and dying all the time, and you know one tree grows too high, it blocks out the sun, the other one dies, and and I they I don't know if they feel it or have a you know soul for a lack of a better word, 
But I right. almost feel like you, I think you can make an argument and I think probably religious people make an argument that there is inherent value in love and compassion that only comes from humans. And if you erase that, you might er erase the thing that enacts it and, and expresses it. But just like two plus two would equal four, if humans didn't live, compassion and love are still, are still valuable things and are still true, even if there's nobody to have it or to express it. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yes, it does. Yes, and and uh, Vyoma is based on the uh, logic and the compassion that we have to uh, help each other out, and uh, we will be able to help each other even more as there are fewer of us. So, uh, but we're, you're talking about when I'm, we're all when gone. We're, when we're down to zero. So I, yeah. I think that that last <clears throat> person mm -hmm. probably be in a bad spot. Oh no, because you plan ahead. <laughs> How do you plan ahead up? for? <laughs> For a lifetime of loneliness, for the, however long it is, it's it's solitary oh, confinement on the planet. Oh, don't you think there would be like a lot of people going at once, like a hundred, hundred and fifty? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, uh, uh, it, that is a concern, of course. Uh, humans do wonderful things, but when you balance it out with how many species that have gone extinct and are going extinct because of our increase in our uh, activities. You just have to kind of balance it out. It's like, yeah, we're special. We're really very, very good. But, you know, they don't let the uh, judges participate in the beauty contest for good reason. <laughs> you have all these little quips that kind of put me on my heels a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I fundamentally I would I would disagree that uh, that uh, a world without human beings and, and consciousness is not better than one without it and i i yeah. think that you know yeah. there's definitely validity to some of the things that you're saying regarding uh -huh. over usage and over consumption and, and and things of that nature but i do think yeah. that there's got to be a way and i think that you can argue that we're striving towards that um even though it's misguided at times it's all human human existence is nothing but trial and error is, is it outside yeah. of your um is it outside of the, the world of possibilities that we could strike a balance with with nature and our in our own existence where it is healthy and you know what by whichever measure whatever unit of measure you want to use could we mm -hmm. is it possible that we find a balance where we still have people love compassion and a healthy vibrant planet yeah well just because we never have doesn't mean we never will right. it's something to strive for for sure. Mm -hmm and uh, learning from indigenous cultures and so on, but not at 8 billion. So one of the major things we would have to do w when we get uh, down to that few uh, is to keep it there. Mm -hmm. And we are so freaking fecund. We just, you know, I don't know if there's any other species that's ready to breed as much as we are. Uh, even mammals, you know, they come into season and they mate and breed and of course they have no idea that they're creating more of themselves we're the only ones that know that pretty sure uh, and we aren't really we don't have an instinct to have more of us we have an instinct to engage in activities that lead to more of us mm -hmm. that's all that nature needs to provide and so we can thwart that because we we know about it uh, and i hope we will much more than we are what about during the uh, the COVID lockdowns? Did you have any pause there? Because you were seeing bodies of water who were getting species they haven't seen in a while just because it was so untouched. And yeah. was it rats were like overrunning Bourbon Street because they were going to areas they weren't able to before? Was that like, oh, maybe we just got to chill out a little bit? Or you're like, no, this is still, you just see that 8 billion and you're like, I'm, I can't, that, that, that pains me to see 8 billion people in this world. Yeah, no, death has never, net, uh, increasing our deaths has never, uh, prevented our growth. Uh, it's really tragic to have increased deaths. There are a lot of people. Uh, we lost a lot of a lot of people. Uh, but only a few days, or let's see, about, about a week, I think, of uh, population growth, uh, maybe two weeks. So it will never, even as tragic as uh, COVID-19 was, and as much many lives as it disrupted, it really had it doesn't show on the uh, graph for po world population. 
Oh, I, I was speaking more in regards to the lockdowns and how like people would have to, you know, kind of like there there is pollution de- decrease, like the air quality improved and and certain. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that shows that if that we could, uh, if we have to, but we went right back to it. Right. Uh, it, you know, it, and in China, a million people a year die from the air pollution in China, mm-hmm. and so that cleared up the skies and uh there were very fewer m- far fewer people dying of uh air pollution uh, however it also increased the heat because that was providing uh you know some uh reflection and so there may have been as many people dying from heat instead of uh pollution and how many people are with you in your movement less oh there must be millions really <laughs> No, uh, Could you know? it's not a, a, uh, a membership organization, so I have no way of knowing, but I just extrapolate from the number of people who have um, emailed me and say, I thought I was the only one. I thought of this a long time ago. And so it's something that people think of on their own. That's why I don't call myself the founder. I'm the finder. It was here. I just found it, gave it a name. Maybe it won't get lost again now that it has a name. Mm-hmm. But, you know, even if there's 3 million out of 8 billion, that's not a not a huge percentage of uh, of people. Yeah. You know, I don't think uh, vehement, I don't think our movement, uh, despite of all the bumper stickers and T-shirts and everything, website, I don't think it's had much of an influence. But young people are deciding on their own lately, uh, we don't want to do that. So it's, it's up to like 44% I saw in, the, uh, in one of the polls from the Pew Trust. And uh, do you think they're, they're deciding waking- that? Do you think they, because like you hear that other term thrown around where it's, they call them involuntary celibates. Oh, yes. Right. Where it's well, like if they, if it were up to them, they would be mm-hmm. procreating, but they can't for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame. I, I, I think I agree. there's an awful lot of that. Uh, people's uh, social skills just mm-hmm. never develop to the point that uh, anybody wants to be with them uh, for very long. And, uh, of course, it doesn't take very long to be with someone to uh, start a new human. <laughs> well, two minutes in my experience. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, the divorce rate right after uh, <laughs> uh, procreation uh, is pretty high. Mm-hmm. But uh, people find out it's, it's not as much fun as we thought it was going to be. And so, yeah, anyway, uh, but a lot of young people are saying, "Well, I." They, for a lot part of it is they can't afford to, mm-hmm. to have uh, offspring. They can't even afford to take care of themselves, can't get a good job. So um, they're just an awful lot of voluntarily child-free. But yeah. as you say, people who can't get into relationships, uh, incels, uh, that, that is tragic. And I, I hope we could um, improve that. Uh, more... Uh, Better, better child rearing. Yeah, of course, fewer. <laughs> but uh, and and you know that is part of it. Uh, mm-hmm. Now that uh, abortion in, in a lot of states has been illegal, there are uh, tens of thousands of women uh, having offspring that they really don't want to have, desperately did not have. And so, how is it for that offspring to be raised? I, yeah, they'll they'll grow to love it and all, but there were probably good reasons why they didn't want to have that offspring uh like money (laughs) and so uh all these uh unwanted at first unintended might be a better way to say it Mm -hmm. uh because a lot of women do and and men too sometimes if they stick around uh grow to love that uh unintended consequence i mean there's 121 million unintended uh conceptions pregnancies every year only 48 million actually are carried to term. And that's unintended. Those 48, a lot of those probably were wanted. Uh, but a lot of them were because they couldn't find um, safe and legal uh, abortion. Of course, Plan A will take care of that if men will finally step up and stop impregnating women that don't want to be pregnant. I mean, mm-hmm. most abortions are caused by a man impregnating a woman who doesn't want to be a impregnated mm-hmm. well, how do you react less if someone in your life tells you that they're pregnant well uh, like I assume selfish. that when they tell me it's already too late for an abortion so I won't be saying can I help you afford abortion mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to travel out of state yeah. so 
you know, I, I really feel sorry for them, but I feel really sorry for that new person that's going to uh, be living through the next 80 years, if they live that long, uh, of, uh, I, I know y'all don't see this uh, environment as uh, denigrating <laughs> as I do, but it just doesn't look like a place that I would want to live or sentence someone to life in, you know, the book, uh, The Uninhabitable Earth. And of course, the author went ahead and produced uh, with his partner a couple of offspring. It's like, you, you wrote a book on an earth becoming un uninhabitable. And he said, well, we got, that's all the more reason to fight to keep it from becoming uninhabitable. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Do so you feel bad for these babies. Oh yeah, for the for the new person, absolutely. I used to feel bad for the environment because every one of us, you know, is, is bad for the environment. But anymore, I'm just feeling just as sorry for the the new person because they're going to suffer. Do you think there's any people that subscribe to this thinking that? Because I don't think that you come from it from a selfish point of view. But if it do you think there's any any people who are like, well, more for me? Like, I'll just trash this place. I'm, you know, we're all leaving anyways. Like, who cares? Like, the, the environment will find a way once we're gone to repair itself as, as it always has. Yeah, yeah. There, there are people. In mm -hmm. fact, some people who are, have chosen, couples have chosen to be child free, mainly for selfish. I hate to use that term because yeah. every, just could, it could be argued that everything we do is selfish, mm -hmm. but uh, more self centered like you say more for us we don't have to uh waste it on uh, offspring that we didn't want to raise anyway mm -hmm. so now we're going to europe next week you know so um and you know i was just engaging with someone on uh x that uh, they said well, why do you care uh what's going to happen after you die like that's kind of hard to explain but yeah. i think we should care what happens after we die that's why we most of us fill out a will to give people something right. and care about you know, the world that will be here after we're gone, even if humans are extinct. I care about what will what'll be left. Do you think people are more likely to care about what happens after they're gone if they do have children? Hmm. hmm. That is a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> I think they, it's they a would probability. Care about care about their children anyway i hear that all the time uh, from environmentalists saying mm -hmm. yeah what it, it, you know i'm concerned about my children and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren and my great great I call, okay that's enough i'll get the picture yeah so do you and the other question we i want to circle back to something you said you said not at eight billion and i i think you could probably make a very good argument that you know eight billion is a lot ten billion is a lot i don't i don't i can't really refute you with any data or science or anything like that but do you think there is i know that zero okay because you <laughs> Ideally. said right well for you <laughs> but you said that you know it, it's like if we get down to a number like you know we can maybe tr we can you know there's always the poss you said there's always the possibility that we could find that balance right well the way that we will never find it is if we get to zero so is there a number of the population where you think is healthy enough to experiment and try things and be like, and, and where we're, we're, you know, we're kind of in that zone where it's like, things can be, it's not horrible, but things can be better. Let's try doing it. Cause once you get to zero, there's no more trying. And if you think love right. is, is a good thing and compassion, human compassion is a good thing that mm -hmm. you would want to preserve instead of sacrifice for the planet. Well, is there a number, is there a population number that you think is, we're all right. We're at this number. Now we can try to improve. Well, I won't be around to see it. Okay. <laughs> but as we as we phase out and become fewer and fewer, yeah, I think we should uh, and would uh, try all sorts of compassionate uh, ways to uh, reach a balance with the planet and increase uh, wildlife habitat. And uh, it would be a lot easier uh, if we could just expand the area that wildlife uses instead of the other way around. But, you know, it was only about uh, 70,000 years ago, humans were down to 10, 15,000, mm -hmm. they estimate based on our genetic. Uh, and uh, that's a pretty good number. <clears throat> 10,000 years is not that long ago. As I mentioned before, mm -hmm. we are so fecund. 
we we just we'll breed at the t- drop of a hat. Sometimes we leave our hat on. <laughs> Ten thousand, fifteen thousand. That's it's like a one A football school town. Yeah, that's not even. A... <laughs> yeah, what do we got? We're gonna have. We can't have football. We we can't have football if we don't have enough people. What do you have? Uh, Eleven people on the side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it won't be good football. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what about yeah. what about the idea that in order to fix the planet? You need more special people, more geniuses, and if you if you're decreasing the population year after year, and the birth rates dropping year after year, you're essentially having less kicks at the genetic can of having a genius that can fix things, uh, a Newton, an Einstein, yeah. something like that. Yes, it, it it does seem that way because it's uh, you know a number system, mm-hmm. but. As I mentioned earlier, tens of thousands of children die every day, every day of preventable causes. And, uh, you know, there are millions, there, there are two billion people on our planet who are suffering food insecurity. We don't say hungry anymore. Mm-hmm. They are experiencing food insecurity. And, you know, if, if children don't grow up with the nourishment that they need, they, they might learn how to tie their shoes, but they aren't going to be yeah. Einstein. So if we take care of everybody who's already here, which will be easier to do if we stop increasing by 70 billion, million a year, uh, then there will be more geniuses, I, I think. Uh, we take care of, uh, of people much better, like I mentioned before. We need better health, uh, better care for the children that are already here. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean health care, not, uh, you know, have a couple wants to have a, an offspring, but they don't want to raise it themselves. So, well, why are you having this offspring? So, uh, Government-subsidized uh, child care is just a, another subsidy for uh, minimum wage, yeah, uh, low wage, you, you know, like food stamps are. It's like you're working full-time at uh, minimum wage, but you don't have enough to eat. So, yeah. Around what age did you start feeling this? Um, it was when I finally got out of the uh, terrorist group uh, called the U.S. Army, and I went back to college on the GI Bill, and I uh, started looking around, and uh, there was a group called Zero Population Growth, and they said stop at two, and the idea was that two couple, you know, two people have two people that'll just replace themselves. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not a real whiz in math, but I could see that two plus two was four, and those two will have two, and you know there will be more and more. So I thought, well, we should have a moratorium. And I thought, well, why ever start having more of us? So I guess I was about 21, 20, 21, not in there, when I uh, started thinking, you know, all of these uh, efforts that we're making at uh, saving the forests and keeping the water clean and all these things, every one of them runs up against people, too many people, too many of us wanting to... Um, do what we do and it just uh, further impacts the environment i see it more out here because we have clear cutting of forests we used to cut down uh old growth Mm -hmm. uh most of it's gone now there's very little left uh but they're trying to get that too it's what in uh, vancouver bc they're uh, actually cutting down some of the ancient forests it's just Inhumane, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, in treeish, or whatever the word <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. When that, when, that, when were you what, in the army? Was, was that like the late '60s, something like that? Yeah, six, '68. I was uh, drafted in '68. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, you know, they had just suffered one of the biggest uh, defeats in uh, Vietnam, and so they said, "Send more bodies, quick!" So I I was uh, captured, taken at gunpoint into their. Uh, terrorist group but i went to germany instead where i was fighting to keep the uh russians from taking over europe and we did pretty good we only lost czechoslovakia <laughs> sorry yeah whoops yeah no one cared about that one anyway so nah, yeah. i mean i mean they split into two countries right. anyway so they didn't even like each other yeah, yeah. I, it's all, you see there you go mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah wow. all right then anything else no i think that's it i i i, I must say I don't agree with your premise in oh, general, darn. but I, but I, but I did enjoy, I did enjoy the conversation. I'll say that right. I enjoyed talking Me to too. you. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to say, look around and see how bad things are, but 
<laughs> you know, I, uh, yeah, I think awareness, I think awareness is good. And I think a dialogue is mm-hmm. good. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm thrilled you came on. It was, it was great talking to you. I guess, Thank is you. There, I guess, is there any direct thing that you could point to like agriculture wise or, you know, uh, anything you could point to where I could really see it and be like, oh. man, look how bad this is. Oh, thanks. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's all over the place. I try not to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I do see encouragement, uh, encouraging things happening, but not for the most part. But uh, the main thing that I would like to put out is that we need to make sure that everybody who doesn't want to procreate has the wherewithal not to procreate. I think we're a long ways from that. Don't you take a few hundred billion, but it'll pay for itself uh, because we're taking care of people who can't take care of themselves. And mm-hmm. if they were allowed to not procreate, we wouldn't be taking care of them. So anyway, reproductive freedom, SRHR, they're calling it. Mm-hmm. That's that's uh, my main pitch. Doesn't do any good to convince people not to procreate when they don't have the wherewithal to not procreate. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, then, Les. So your website is vhemt.org. Uh, anywhere else people could find you? You said you're on X and that whatnot. Oh, yeah. But really, the website is the best place. And uh, from there, uh, in fact, this this uh, podcast will be on there so- pretty soon, uh, or the link to it. I won't Perfect. actually put it on there. So when will people be able to watch this? This will be out uh, tomorrow. So we, we will be ready to roll. Oh, all mm-hmm. right. I will put it on the website. Because there's yeah. a there's a section right at the, on the front page. Uh, it, it says what's new, what's happening, and this you'll be at the top of the of the list on that. Great, perfect. Thanks a lot, Les. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. It's my my pleasure. <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Back tomorrow with a free swim. We'll see you then.